Welcome back. So we are making pocket soup. What is pocket soup? It's basically a bouillon, a homemade bouillon. Um, from the get-go, I'm going to let you know, it is a tedious process. Um, so much so that many of you may ask, why the hell would you go through so much effort when you can buy it on the store? You, you hear that a lot when you travel down this path to this type of lifestyle. Um, any form of self-sufficiency, many people today, so why would you do that? You could just get that at the store. You could just pay someone to do it. You can just whatever, insert the situation. Um, like many things, uh, what you find in the store is full of preservatives and artificial crap that I personally do not want to put into my body or the bodies of my children, my family. So, yes, I will take a few extra steps to do something myself. Um, and also, it costs nothing more than time. So why would I spend my money on something when I could do that myself for free? So that's why I do it. Um, also, just as a side note, my pantry and freezer are getting quite full. So I don't have the room to store five or six gallons of bone broth, um, whether that be in the freezer or on my pantry shelf. Uh, another thing is I, I have this family goal of hiking the entire Ice Age Trail here in Wisconsin, which is about 1,200 miles from start to finish. That is my goal. Um, and to do that, I'm going to have to pack a significant amount of food for six people that is lightweight, um, doesn't take up much space. But it is nutritionally dense. That's the key. Um, obviously, we would forage and fish uh, along the way, but I can't depend on that completely. So I'm spending this time now, while the children are young and unable to take a trek like that, to perfect our food um, storage methods that we would take along with us. And this is one of them. So, let's make some pocket soup. So, here is my batch of both batches of bone broth from the previous video. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to skim all this grease off the top here and just throw it out because that needs to come off. So just gently, because I don't want to stir it up too much. So what I did is I poured it all in here, I warmed it up, and then I let it cool so everything would settle to the top. So I'm going to get this skimmed off, and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so we have skimmed off our bone broth and now we have to strain it to separate what little solids might be left. So I'm going to try and not make a mess. Cheesecloth is going to work much better for this, um, but use what you have and that's fine. So we have strained our broth and it is beautiful and clear. And now we are just going to pour it back into the crock pot after it's been washed, of course, and dried. Look at that, just beautiful, rich goodness. And then we are gonna cook it with the lid off on low um, for as long as it takes until until it's done. So I'm going to set this on low and let this cook. Okay, so I just wanted to give an update. We are about nine, eight, let's see. Yeah, 
at about 10 hours in. And it started here and has reduced about an inch and a half. So this is a long process, but just be patient. We will get there. Okay, so here's another check. As you can see, it's reduced quite a bit. So what we're looking for, or what we're waiting for, is for this to cook down until it begins to gel. So, I don't know if you can see it, but we'll take you a little bit closer. Let's hope I don't drop this. But you see how it's thickening up? The residue on the side here is starting to thicken up. It's not quite gelled yet, but got a nice thick coat left on your finger when I dip it in there. So I think it's almost there. Definitely feels syrupy and thick. So we're almost there, and I don't know if you can notice it, but when it moves, that section in the middle here, see how thick it looks? So I think we're almost there. We're so close. We're going around 20 hours, like I said. This time, there's two hours left on the timer. So I'm just going to let it go and shut it off and see if it cools or once it cools that it'll gel up. If not, then I'll turn it back on warm and or low and we'll keep going. Almost ready. So when I stopped it last, it did not gel up. So I turned it back on and we have been cooking it for quite a few more hours. But it's almost, almost there. I can feel it gelling. Right, Mom? All right, it finally gelled. So what I'm going to do is take this out and get it onto a cooling rack if you don't have a dehydrator. Um, but we have to dry this out now. All right, so we have our highly concentrated broth. As you can see, not all of it had gelled up as much as I would like, but this is very thick. It's like a syrup, so I'm hoping this still works out the way I want it to. I'm pretty sure it will. So I'm going to put these in my dehydrator on the lowest setting. I have a fan setting. You cannot use heat with this. It'll just turn into a liquid mess. Uh, so if you don't have a dehydrator, put it in front of a fan. So after close to a full day in the dehydrator, because I didn't cook it down long enough, I had to scrape it off and flip it over so it could finish drying. That's what you see me doing in this picture here. So here is the finished pocket soup. It was about three full days in the dehydrator after a couple of days cooking down in the crock pot. So here it is. This is over a gallon 
of bone broth that is finely finished and turned into pocket soup. A highly concentrated bouillon, basically. Um, couple of things. I would suggest, if you can, keep cooking your broth down until it fully gels, until it gels all the way through. Um, I cooked mine down to basically a thick syrup state, as you saw, and which obviously you can see turned out fine, but I had to, I had to um, add an extra step. I had to scrape that off my sheets and flip it over to allow the rest of it to dry. So, if you don't want to do that, fully gel your broth and then put it in front of your fan or in your dehydrator. So, that's it you guys. A long, slow, tedious process, but in my book, well worth it. Give it a try. The next few videos, we'll do some cooking experiments with this and see, um, you know, what the ratio of water to bouillon will be. So stay tuned.